Welcome to our state, sir. I'm really happy that… My uh, state too, not yes, your yes. state <laughs> alone. <laughs> I am really happy Mr. Ram and Mr. Chidambaram is also among us. Sir, uh, there is an unusual situation prevailing in our state. You know, the elected people, when they pass a bill, I mean to say the Tamil Nadu Legislative Assembly passes the bill and send it for the assent of the governor. The governor sleeps over the bill without exercising his duties and responsibilities under Article 200. In some situation, we also see that when a bill is touching upon list three subjects, instead of forwarding to the president and the governor takes over the powers and the responsibilities of the president under Article 201, and uh, sends a message. What do you see, sir? Uh, is this good for a democracy, number one? Number two, can a governor create a constitutional deadlock? Number three, can a governor who is being a nominal head of the government can act against the will of the people because we see the bill as the reflection of the will of the people? Sir, what, how do you see the situation? How to, how who an ideal governor should be, sir? Or how do you feel like? Thank it's you, sir. It's difficult to decide <laughs> who an ideal governor should be. But, but you know, the, many of the questions that you have asked are answered by the, in the Arun Arunachal Pradesh judgment of the Supreme Court of India. The governor has very limited powers under the Constitution. If he, if he thinks that the bill violates some provision of parliamentary legislation, he can refer it to the union, to the president, but he can't take it upon himself to reject the bill. He can send it back to the legislature for the legislature to, with, 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 with his comments, for the legislature to look at it. Uh, but he has no other powers. And, and the Supreme Court has very clearly set out his limited powers. They say only, he has, only in three situations he has powers but otherwise not so but unfortunately again it's the legacy of our colonial past that you have the office of the governor i, I don't see why should there there should be a governor i think we should evolve a different mechanism uh, to deal with our relations with the union and the state the, the governors nowadays are o o allegiance more less to the constitution and more to something else and they've openly said so some of them have openly said so that we are first something else and then we are governors. So, you know, that's very disturbing. But then again, that's an institution which now you is used for the purposes of either destabilizing an established government when it can be destabilized or actively involving itself in the politics of the state. And this is certainly not what the role of the governor ever was, it ever was conceived to be. Yes. Oh, please, I am Anbarasi uh, from Tamil Nadu. I am teaching constitutional law in law colleges in Tamil Nadu. Uh, first of all, it's a very great day uh, listening to your lecture, a uh, detailed lecture. So my question is uh, regarding the usage of the words union and center. Uh, while reading the constitution, we don't find the mention of central government anywhere. But uh, politicians or any leaders, when they mention, they use the term central government. So what's the difference between the usage of the term union government and the central government? I mean, I think that the, the union government is because we are a union of states, right? And so that's what the union government means. When you say the center, you mean the government in Delhi. That's what you mean. That's the difference. So, as far as our constitution is concerned, there are provisions for impeachment of the president, judges of the high court, Supreme Court, and there are procedure for removing even a popular government by a no confidence motion. But unfortunately, there is no provision with regard to a governor who is not acting in accordance with the constitution, not even a right to recall. Should right. there not be a provision? In your, what is your perspective on that? Well, the question is that the appointment of the governor is by the by the union government, 
and so they can recall. Um, there is a provision to recall that you can change the governor. You've seen many governors being transferred from one place to another. But the people of the state cannot recall the governor because the governor is not appointed by the state. So how do you recall the governor? Constitutionally, there is no specific provision for recalling the governor. No, you can recall the governor by, by saying you resign or you, you, you're no longer the governor. That means only with the Senate government. Only, obviously, because he's appointed. The power to appoint includes the power to resume, yeah. re remove. That's the General Clauses Act. That's what. That's the power of recall. But the question is, if you don't like the governor, you can't recall him because you haven't appointed him. It's a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning. Uh, big tribute to Rakesh. So I'm Dr. Vijay Lakshmi from Dr. Ambedkar Law University, and I teach criminal law. The question is about the recent amendment of the criminal procedure regarding the identification. When we talk about the justice and fundamental rights, are we really going to protect Article 21, personal liberty? Well, quite frankly, I haven't studied the bill that carefully. I think Mr. Chidambaram has made a very, very informed speech in Parliament about that bill. And you'll find all the answers there. Sir, please, if it is possible. <laughs> now yeah. we can no, no, really, you'll find all the answers. Read that speech. Very meticulously is analyzed each provision of the bill and how it's very dangerous because it, it, it sort of interferes in, in, in privacy. It has huge implications on human dignity. All these issues are dealt with by him. Just go to the website uh, of Parliament and read his speech, his response, his speech in Parliament on that. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. I'm Preeta Sudhumaran from School of Excellence, uh, Chennai. Yeah. I've uh, asked this question to many of my professors in the college as well, uh, the right to recall. Why is there is a difficulty in implementing it. Right to recall what? Right to recall the people because as a democratic person, I can elect the, the person. I can elect. So I, when can I recall? Right to recall the representative of the people. Representative of the people. Why is it still there's a difficulty in implementing yeah, the problem is The problem is that uh, what's the procedure to recall? How many signatures do you need? These are all very complicated issues. If you so say you say you need a thousand signatures, you have a thousand signatures every other day. It will derail the whole, whole democratic process. You shouldn't have elected him in the first place. That's the answer. You live, you marry once, you've got to stay with the husband or the, you have to stay with the wife, no? Yeah, you have to go to court of law and say, prove your case. So you'll have to provide a procedure like that to prove your case. But then the, the modalities of it are exceptionally complicated. How do you, how, you will then have to have a referendum, no? So how many referendums will you have? Because every other day there'll be enough people to be unhappy with whoever it is. And then there'll be politics involved in it. It's a governor, uh, you know, if a representative chosen by X, the other party will seek his recall. So he won't be able to do anything for the constituency. I'm not very enthused by that idea. Uh, thank you, that was a thought provoking lecture. It raises many questions, but let me stick to just one. Your thoughts on the rule of law in the bulldozing state. Has the judiciary given a free pass to state governments to bulldoze constructions deemed illegal or encroachments? And uh, it, the trend has moved now from UP to Madhya Pradesh. Yes. Jiski lati uski pants. That's what was said by me earlier. The question is that most of this is targeting the minority communities. And uh, where do they go? Lawyers are not very difficult to get lawyers. They don't have capacity to pay. And uh, they become themselves become targets if they start representing people. I've seen many lawyers have come to me saying that you just day before yesterday, somebody came to me and set up an organization which doesn't consist of Muslims. And then we will bring you cases and you help us. This is the fear. It's a phase in our political life, and I hope that we can sort of, uh, it'll end one day. But it's uh, very dangerous, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, and and, and uh, those in power should realize that it can have very serious repercussions. So myself, Arun Karthik from Savita School of Law. Myself being a very young law student, I was highly sensitized with your words that India must stand up. But I am also very acute that tomorrow I might be the threat to the national security <coughs> or I may be uh, treated under uh, UAPA by tomorrow. 
how a budding as a budding lawyers we should manage between these two things and how should uh, our approach should be be cautious and yet be brave <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. My name is Naveen from Bharat Institute of Law. I teach law here. I have a uh, question from my students. Uh, are we really a secular nation? Especially minority students are asking this question. Are we second grade citizens in this country? And what is the country doing to protect us? Thank you, sir. So I see. I think we have a very skewed idea about secularism, quite frankly. What do you mean by secular? ultimately it means only inclusive actually if you are targeting a journalist who doesn't who is who dissents and you are targeting him then whether he is a muslim or a or a hindu it really doesn't matter it's not a secular state that targets a journalist because it's not an inclusive state it's targeting him because he is dissented so secularism doesn't i think it should not be limited to communities in targeting communities a secular state of mind is an inclusive state of mind and that's really the true interpretation of secularism which we have forgotten actually i'm very pain to say nowadays uh, some of the executives are uh, passing orders against the orders of uh, judiciary without minding about the judiciary how to curtail and uh, how to control uh, such executives i su suggest you go to the court of law and ask them to control those fellows <laughs> Thank you very much for this occasion. The topic chosen, the topic answered, the recommendation given, giving a call to the public to stand up, all leads to the next thought-provoking question. in today's scenario will the might do the right will the might do the right will the mind do the right will the mind do the right will the might might will the might do might, the right i see yes, if sir. the answer is again negative how long every indian should suffer how long it's going to take us where it's going to take us thank you i know where it's going to take us if we don't stand up <laughs> that i know but i think that you see movements are not generated um in a jiffy uh, movement is generated if we sacrifice a bit of our time a bit of our lives and the young men said what will happen to me if i am sent under upa to jail well if they send me to jail will they send me to jail i'll have still to still say what i am saying i've said today what i have said openly right and i say that all the time and they may send me to jail but they send me to jail they send me to jail doesn't matter i'm not going to stop saying what i want to say because that's how movements are made you have to speak out you have to stand up and consequences will be there but we have to i mean how did the national movement uh, and how would how did we win freedom because we stood up and this is another battle for freedom that we have to fight that's what it is thank you sir might will never do right <laughs> yes, thank yes. you sir thank you very much sir thank, thank you, you very much. much thank you thank you sir Give it a good applause for you, sir.